Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're actually gonna be doing something a little different than what we normally do. We're gonna actually talk about Marvel's mapping of their omnibus. If you don't know what mapping means, it's the way that they decide to collect comic books and what order they decide to do it. And it's honestly been something that's been a pet peeve of mine since I got into the Omnibus game around two years ago. I've been reading comic books my entire life and collecting trade paperbacks, single issues, but when I got into the Omnibus game, I thought it would make it a little bit more uh, fun and cohesive to see all these stories collected in one book. But what Marvel's been doing recently is just kind of a uh, annoying way of how they're mapping it. Structurally, these books are getting better and better every year, but the event Omnibus, when you actually sit down and read them, can be a little jarring and a little confusing with the way they decide to map these omnibus. So let's get into it a little bit. Today's example of bad mapping is actually going to be in the Absolute Carnage omnibus, which is a cool omnibus, but again, the mapping is what kind of throws it off for so me. Absolute Carnage was an event that came out in 2019. Um, and collected an omnibus in 2020. The nice thing about more recent events is Marvel is actually releasing them in omnibus form very quickly compared to how they used to in the past. But how they're putting them together uh, is where I have a little bit of a problem. So real quick about this omnibus, it is out of print, but it was $100 when it came out. Uh, if you want to see what it collects, you could pause right here just to see what's included. It's all the absolute carnage tie-ins and the main series itself. Let's take a look at the actual book itself. It's a gorgeous book. It has really awesome artwork by Ryan Stegman. So just to jump right into what my issue with this omnibus is, uh, and a lot of these event omnibus is the way it collects the main series and the tie-in series. Just from the table of contents, we get the Absolute Carnage mini series one through five first, but then we get the Venom tie-ins. Uh, the Spider-Man tie-ins and all the other subsequent tie-ins uh, right after that. My issue with that is you get the main series, so you know the beginning, middle, and end of the main plot of the whole story. And then you backtrack a little bit by seeing like what Venom did while all those events were happening, what Spider-Man did while all those events were happening, what Miles Morales did, and so on. Reading the tie-ins after you read the main series just makes it feel like you want to rush through it, honestly. The book starts with a prequel from Free Comic Book Day 2019 or 18. I'm not 100% sure which one that was. Uh, and then we get the main series. But right after we complete the main series, we actually get Venom 16, which is written by the same writer, Donny Cates, and is a prequel to the main series. So it just it seems super out of place. And most of this story takes place in the earlier part of the main series. So again, it, when it's written by the same writer, I at least I wish they put those in order. And maybe all the other tie-ins, since they're not as essential, throw those in the back. But this one really bothers me because it's literally crucial to the main plot. So after the main series in Venom, we get to see you know all the characters interact with Carnage and his alkalides, which is awesome and fun in itself. And there's actually a lot of good strong moments in these mini series and tie-ins but again they're not 100 percent as crucial to the story as donny kate's run on venom and the main series so to wrap up my little tangent on this the book basically wraps up with the tie-in with uh featuring captain marvel and then immediately after the captain marvel issue we get a description talking about these stinger pages uh they call them stinger pages because uh they're like teasers that were released a month before the Absolute Carnage event uh, in a lot of the Marvel Comics ongoing series. So again, we get literal prequels to the main series and all these other tie-ins in the very back of the book. So it's not even prequels just to the main series, it's prequels to all the tie-ins after you've already read the tie-ins. So very strange choice on doing that. So if you're like me and you like reading things in chronological order, uh, definitely be ready to have a bunch of bookmarks and do a little research online to jump around this book. I don't hate this book. I actually enjoy it a lot. It's just I really prefer to read things in chronological order, especially if it's collected all in one edition. So not all books are mapped the same way that the Absolute Carnage Omnibus is. Uh, there's a lot of uh, Omnibus that are doing it the way that I more prefer where everything's in chronological order. Um, DC Comics has been pretty dang solid with doing that. So this is the Infinite Crisis Omnibus, uh, and it literally starts with a prequel uh, called um, Countdown to uh, Infinite Crisis. And then we get a crossover series with uh, Superman and Wonder Woman where they take on Maxwell Lord. And then we get a couple of more countdown stuff, all in chronological order, literally everything in order. And we don't even get to Infinite Crisis until about middle 
well, about a third of the way in the book, and then we get into Infinite Crisis and all those miniseries with perfect chronological order. Some people could argue that reading all the tie-ins with the main series uh, is a little bit too much and it thickens the plot way too much where you start losing details from the main series or other tie-ins. To that, what I would say is, you know, comic book readers for the most part, we don't just pick up a book and read it once. We read it again and again and again. And if we really want to read just the main series, it is much cheaper just to buy a trade paperback for $10 from eBay versus spending $100 on getting everything put into one book. So good on DC for putting something together like this uh, in a chronological order, putting everything in a way that makes the story flow better. And hopefully we can see Marvel do a little bit more of that in the near future because like I said, these are expensive books and we get them to read a complete story. Uh, I just wish we were able to read it all in uh, a cohesive order. And to give credit where credit's due, Marvel is doing a pretty good job of their more retro line uh, of event comic books, putting those together in a way that uh, it flows the way it's supposed to flow. Everything's in chronological order. Uh, one of them being the Heroes Were Born on the bus that I actually just went over not too long ago. If you read Heroes Were Born, you know that all the series that were under that banner tie into each other very closely. So it's nice that they were able to put everything in order in a way that would actually make sense if you're reading it as one complete story. Subsequently, they did the same thing for the Heroes Were Born, The Return Omnibus. So uh, not the most popular Marvel series, but definitely uh, good on them for getting this series put together in a way that makes more sense than the way they did with Absolute Carnage. And just to really drive the point home, Secret Invasion, written by Brian Michael Bendis, uh, all the tie-ins in the main series are written by literally the same writer and they came out in order that you would be able to read the story with all its tie-ins and see an even larger scope of the story. But they did the same thing for this omnibus too, where you get the main series or you get one prologue, you get the main series and then it backtracks by giving you all of Brian Michael Bendis' run of New Avengers and then his run of Mighty Avengers and it's just... It doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's literally the same writer and they just take everything and take it out of order. So, sorry to keep piling on to Marvel, but come on Marvel, let's get some uh, better mapping on these omnibus, please. So there you have it, guys. That's uh, all for me this week. I just wanted to talk about mapping on omnibus, uh, give you guys a little bit of a warning of what the more recent Marvel event on this look like. I would definitely recommend checking out uh, a thread that explains the reading order of the event on this uh, ahead of time if you are concerned about reading things in order. If they ever decide to do reprints of these two on this, I'll definitely buy them if they put them in that order. That would be, that'd be excellent. It'd just be, it would make my day to see that happen. I wanna thank you guys again for watching. Uh, very looking forward to your comments on this video. Uh, I wonder if you agree with me or if you actually prefer it to be the way that they do it in these more recent event omnibus. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe I'm the only person that believes this, but definitely let me know in the comment section. I want to thank you guys again for watching. Uh, please make sure you do like, share, subscribe, and share this with other enthusiasts of comic books like us. I want to thank you again. Time to jump off the omnibus. <laughs>